first heard about the HPV vaccination when I was in high school. I was just using my own knowledge as an 18-year-old high school student that, oh, I don't need this. That's not going to happen to me. It's really hard to describe 33 or 32 radiation treatments and the effect they have on you. But it's like going maybe 20 rounds with Muhammad Ali. I got a phone call from my doctor. And his first words to me was, uh, you need to get your personal stuff in order. It brought me to, I don't want to say the brink of death, but it was probably the hardest point in my life to go through those treatments. I guess that's the one big thing I'm really emotional about is, is the fact that my family had to go through what they had to go through while I was going through it. It's not just, just about me, they're also affected as well. My first symptom was a lump under my jaw. I had stage four cancer, which was from the tonsils, HPV 16, started with chemotherapy, and then they bring in the heavyweight, which is the radiation. I have no chest muscle, my neck's a mess, I'm in pain, I have headaches, my feet hurt, my hands hurt, I can't look over my shoulder. This is as good as my voice is ever going to get. I'm miserable compared to how great I was before I got HPV, before I got throat cancer. The initial cancer was diagnosed with a pap smear. They went ahead with the hysterectomy. And I was told that if the cancer was gonna come back, it would come back within the first year. But it was less than 1% chance of it coming back. At 1%. 1% is 1%, and when that 1% is you, I foolishly thought that once we'd beaten the cancer, I was done. But the colostomy never went away. Then I developed the fistula. The disease and what comes with it is always at the beginning of your mind. I discovered a lump in my uh, neck or close to my throat. Uh, on the way to work one day. Went in and did biopsy about five, six days later and uh, uh, they, they pretty much knew what they were seeing and uh, she kind of said that it's probably HPV. Really at this point we'd never heard of HPV and we had never heard of you know any kind of throat cancer that wasn't related to smoking or drinking. You see this strong man who always faces the world uh, who's your rock you know, would fall apart, both physically, mentally, emotionally. They don't really do a good job of warning you what you're gonna go through after you're through with the treatment. There was a point that I went through that, oh my God, another night to go through this. And now it's, it's gotten better, but it's not the same, not the same. When I was first diagnosed with cervical cancer and learned that I had to have a hysterectomy, I had a five-year-old child and an 18-month-old child, and my husband at the time and I were actually trying for another child. It was a devastating diagnosis emotionally as well as, you know, difficult physically just going through the surgery. I didn't ever expect that my stage zero cervical cancer would recur. Then seven years later, I found a lump in my neck and they determined that my cervical cancer was back with a vengeance. It had spread to my lymph nodes throughout my body. And then four years later, just this past May, I had a PET scan and they found a lymph node in my pelvis that lit up and after the biopsy was positive for cervical cancer. So I've had two recurrences of my cervical cancer. Telling my children was probably the hardest thing that I had to do, so. Um, 
you know, it's not anything that you ever want to tell your children that my cancer was back. So. I remember from the appointment, the only thing that really stood out to me was, you know, if your tests come back normal, we'll send you something in the mail. If there's something abnormal, you'll receive a phone call. And my phone call came the next day. So I was not HPV free. And in fact, I was already, um, I think, in stage two dysplasia. And so it was something where they wanted me to come back in and immediately have a biopsy. And I did have some of the strains that would have been preventable if I had been vaccinated. They immediately decided to do a LEAP procedure. It consists of burning away the lining of the cervix, which sounded horrible, absolutely horrible. About a year later, once again, dysplasia came up, another LEAP procedure. So now my last pap smear has come back fine, but we're doing another one actually next week just to verify my husband and I want to start a family. And you know, there's definitely concerns that are there as to how that might affect me since every person is so different and how they are affected by HPV. If I could go back when I was 18 and tell her, I would say, you don't know where life is going to take you. You have all these thoughts and plans, but your plans are not what's going to happen. It's not just white females, it's males and head and neck cancers and all kinds of cancers. And the more knowledge we have and the more knowledge we have about the importance of the HPV vaccine, the less people will go through what I'm currently going through and have gone through three times already. I didn't have an option. There was no vaccine for me. You've got a vaccine. If we don't use it, if we don't protect our kids with this, this is our fault have to go through what I had to go through and a lot of other people that have to go through uh, the same thing, it's preventable. You would not want to go through this hell, and there's no other description for it but hell. It's, you are not the same person after you've gone through a cancer like this. Get your sons and daughters vaccinated. It could save their lives. It's cancer prevention, plain and simple. You're listening to the voice of cancer talk. Get them vaccinated so they don't go through what thousands of men and women are going through now.